Thank you very much. Uh, thanks uh, for the invitation. And in fact, when uh, Hans uh, invited me and proposed me to, to talk in, in this meeting, I thought maybe even if what I would talk about is some kind of uh, preliminary study, it would be uh, the right occasion of uh, exposing this uh, audience to the kind of work we're trying to do. And uh, in, this, uh, in, in this title, uh, as I should uh, read uh, easy in the sense of the French uh, way we are talking about uh, the easy web of knowledge and the easy web of science. So what I would like to do here is uh, to think about uh, the way wavelets develop. So it, there will be a lot of overlap with other talks, including, of course, the talk of uh, Martin before. And of course, when we talk about wavelets, there is some kind of folklore which say that there are some keywords about wavelets. The first one is that this was a special instance of uh, seeing in this interdisciplinarity at work. This was also the occasion of seeing emerging some kind of a new paradigm because before the early 80s, wavelets were not considered as they have been later on in, uh, in science in general. And so it was some kind of uh, reshaping of the scientific uh, landscape uh, that we observe. So this is what we all think more or less loosely. And what we are interested in is to see whether it's uh, possible to go a bit beyond the, this uh, loose appreciation. Uh, it's very, very dark. Okay. It's possible. Yeah, well, unfortunately, it was exactly at the same. No, it was. Uh, it's not possible to, yeah, okay. And so the idea was that, is it possible to formalize a little bit this idea to get some more insight about the way wavelet develop and to get some maybe quantitative but also some qualitative evidences about that and for that to rely on facts and data. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. <laughs> that's better. Okay, you now this is this, okay, yeah. This is the first time I tried to do slide this way and uh, maybe it was not a good idea, okay. And so we propose to rely on some uh, bibliometric databases which are a way of seeing, even if not the only one, what happens and to think of uh, snapshots of, uh, of uh, publications and the way this is dynamically uh, evolving with time. And so this is really an ongoing work. Uh, we, are, uh, we started some time ago with people at the uh, Complex System Institute at uh, ENS de Lyon, who, who are Pablo Jensen, Matteo Morini, and Katarina Parasdinets. Okay, so if we want to do that, the first question is uh, how can we ask a, a bibliometric database to say something about wavelets? So the first thing is that, of course, you can just write wavelet star in the, uh, in, in, in the easy web of science. But the, the point is that, I don't know how you can. Yeah, it's invisible? No. Well, it's new. So I'm sorry, but I, I just lose the, I have no way of, okay. Um, so <clears throat> if you do this, what you end up, of course, is a huge collection of, uh, of references. And for instance, if you see a little bit what happens, is that here you get about 80, 100 uh, references, but some of them are really certainly out of, out of scope. For instance, if you look at the first years, you, you see that you are in the 20s, and even if it's not that clear, here is a paper in 26, 1926, whose title is uh, Gastric Wavelets. And uh, of course, this has little to do with the wavelets we consider. And later, for instance, there is a whole literature on wavelets, even in geophysics, which are wavelets not in the sense of the wavelets we are interested in. And for instance, if you, if you go to this Gastric Wavelets paper, so you can get the paper in, in uh, 1926, you see that wavelets are not at all for the analysis, they're just something would happen in the stomach, which is some kind of small vibration, small wave, which is really in the, in the tissue and which has its own interest. And ironically, 
anyway, almost 80 years later, you will find papers studying these gastric wavelets with wavelets, <laughs> which is called the electrogastrogram, without any reference to this uh, very old paper. Okay, but in, in this case, it's certainly better just to forget about this in, in, in the database. So what we did is something a little bit more focused, and we started with uh, an idea that, that the second point, if we are interested in people involved in, in the field, you can roughly see, at least for the beginning, two types of uh, actors, which are people who had already some scientific activity before Wavelet emerged per se, which means that they were involved in other fields, and then it turned out that they developed part of the theory or, and, and they started col collaborating and so on, and they are more also wavelet native in some sense, which is a whole generation of uh, young uh, people who, who started their scientific life when wavelets were uh, just uh, beginning. So one way of thinking about that is to have a look at a document which was uh, this uh, document uh, that some of you may have, I guess, which was a comprehensive uh, uh, bibliography uh, collected in 1993, which means in a phase where wavelets were already reasonably well developed and known and established. And in this, you have plenty of references. And so what we did was to threshold this so as to consider mostly uh, the uh, people who, who had more than five or seven uh, references in this, uh, in this bibliography, and we ended up with a list of 82 authors corresponding to a certain number of papers in this, in this document, but much more if you consider other papers in other domains. And we tried to do some form of shown time analysis, which means uh, to consider what has been <coughs> published in given period of times, and we chose more or less arbitrary four-year snapshots because it was, okay, for having some significance, it should be not too, too short, not too long, and so this can be discussed a lot. And we did that over the period from 1980 to uh, 2010, which is before it really started, because as had been mentioned before, it really started around 83, something like this, and long after it, uh, it had changed in, in some way. Okay, so if we do this, uh, what do you get? You get a uh, thing like this. So if you, if, you, if you consider a paper, for instance, uh, corresponding to this, the paper can be related to uh, information with the title, with the journal, with the year, of course, with the authors, with the keywords, and with the references which are used in the paper. And all these are attributes which can characterize a publication. Okay. And if we do that, uh, we apply uh, uh, some ways of representing this data, analyzing the data, which is referred to as heterog heterogeneous nets, and <coughs> for which the data is the records coming from this uh, web of science for the identified author, which means that could ex outside of the, the booklet I showed before. And the structure we're interested in is really an interaction network in which we will have nodes and links, and the nodes are the authors, okay, I, I will do that each time, sorry. The references, the keywords, the disciplines, and topics, things like this, and the links are the fact that you have a co-appearance of these attributes in the same paper. Okay? And so, in this way, you define a network which can be represented in a form of a graph. And what we are interested in, the way this is organized and how you can see communities, which would, me which would mean a higher density in some, in some domain and another one. And this can be measured or characterized by what is called in network science modularity, which is a measure of how you are more dense in a given subset of the graphs that would be accept expected from a random connection. And so we try to aggregate the data in some domains and we lose a link to, to other domain and see what happens. Okay. And so for visualizing this, we used uh, an open uh, uh, software, which is uh, Jeffy, which has been developed by people in France, originally, which now corresponds to a consortium which is internationally used, and which is based on what is called a force-based algorithm, 
And the idea is that you simulate some kind of physical system in which the node will be charged particles and the links will be springs. So when you start with those charged particles that tend to repel from each other, but you have the links which, depending on the strengths, tend to keep the, uh, the, the particles coupled. And so the, so the more link you have, the more coupled you will have. And if you have a number of nodes which are really exchanging a lot of information in terms of uh, shared information, then they will trend, tend to aggregate in some, in some domain. OK, a demo. So <laughs> usually, it, at this point, that it doesn't work, but we'll see. Uh, OK, so this is. <coughs> Okay, so this is a starting, that's just a very small demo because uh, you, you have plenty of degrees of freedom for the thing and so I just explained the thing. So you start with something which is just an aggregation of all the features, the attributes, for all the collections of the references which are in this case in the period from 1980 to 1983. At the beginning they are just packed randomly and then when you start the, uh, the algorithm, what you see, I will do with the mouse. When you do this, what you see is something which goes that, like this. Okay. Until you will get some equilibrium state. You, you, you expect this to be stabilized, and you see that you get some groupings. Uh, groupings here, grouping there. And so, okay, you have to wait for this to be I just stopped for this. And then you have a lot of information. For instance, the nodes, the size of the node can be related to the number of times it has been uh, involved in the database in this period. And you can get some more refined information with what, what is the information of this, with the titles and the names and so on and so forth. And so you can, you can identify what, what is in the groups and, and how this is organized. So I, I switch back to the, uh, so the colors correspond to the identified communities, which are the group of papers which tends to, to have a maximum of similarity in terms of their connections. But you have two colors. Yeah, but in this case, I don't, I don't know which one in this case uh, this has been done. Uh, uh, I don't remember how it is, it is by, maybe we can, yeah, that's, I go, sorry, I go with me details. Just a comment. This is a typical problem with Jeffrey that, you know, it's very multidimensional and yeah, yeah, of course. you have to do this okay. just in uh, 2D and exactly. you lose the structure. No, no, of course. It's it's a, I perfectly agree with this. It's specialization in some of the problem yeah, yeah. for this kind of problem. Yes, but anyway, anyway even it's if, it's just a, if it's just a, a projection in a 2D space, that's really <coughs> something which is... I will try to... So I come back to my presentation. So I just show you now some of the, the, the graphs you can obtain. Just, I just chose a couple of them. I, I don't, don't show you a complete movie about that. But this is still interesting. Because if you look at the first period from uh, 80 to 83, what I call before, uh, is that, of course, all the papers which are here are corresponding to people who will be active in the development of the wavelet field, but how they are working within, in this period. So not necessarily related to wavelets. And what you see is that... Sorry. <coughs> but, yeah, but I don't know how to do that without uh, reinitializing the thing. So Because the, I don't have access to the... Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do you see more precisely that you, you have some kind of islands. And these islands are more densely connected and loosely connected in between. So here you, you have some, uh, some the, okay. Uh, for instance, here a first island which is really related around the mass, I would say. Okay, and in this math, you see a lot of approximation theory and things that uh, uh, Albert talked about. 
okay? But you have other islands, like for instance, an, an island which is around more physics and mathematical physics, but a lot of dynamical systems, for instance, with Alain and collaborators, and also things around the turbulence with Uriel Frisch and other people. You see another island around engineering, but engineering involved those people which were more in automatic control and partly signal processing. And also you see another island which is uh, quite interesting, which is related to th this other way of thinking about non-stationary things at that time, which were more related to time frequency analysis and in connection with optics, for instance, where there was a lot of developments around people like Hezu and, 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 and other guys. And you see Klassen and Mecklenburg in, in the middle. So that was before, but now if you go further, a little bit uh, in the making, I would say, in the period from 84 to 87, what you observed is that as compared to the previous uh, slide, you see something which is precisely in the middle around this physical and mathematical physics uh, thing where you have a connection, a bridge, which started to be connected in between the physics application and the electrical engineering, more, much more than with the mathematics, for instance, in this case. Okay? And here you see some... Uh, uh, major figure of, uh, of, uh, of wavelets, and you see Grossman and Morley and Dubashi in this. And if you go a little bit later, so still in the making, you see more and more connection, more densely uh, related, and in this case, wavelet turn out to appear as a keyword which is used and which really make uh, a true connection now between the three of, of the domains. Okay, and so this is... Uh, at the center of this picture. And then, if you go further, and you go to what we can call the maturity of the field in from 91 to 94, you get the one unique thing, okay, in which more or less everything is, uh, is has collapsed together, including the, math, the engineering and the, and the physics. And, and it's extremely difficult in this sense, in this case, to, uh, uh, to disentangle the, uh, the different so, if you want to comment about a little about this, uh, what we can say? We can say that uh, in, some th in some sense we see the emergence of a kind of a new paradigm, and this new paradigm is more or less at the convergence of three big things which are related to physics, to informatics or computer science, and to mathematics. And so, it's uh, nice to see that if you think of physics, you can see to, you can see of applications of all this. Informatics, you can see of computation and mathematics, you can see of the major tool which was related to wavelet, which is uh, harmonic analysis, and so you have something which looks like uh, applied uh, and computational harmonic analysis, which is really this, this convergence, and for which I think uh, the, the name is a, the, is, is a good one for, for this uh, emerging field. And if you think about this in terms of the wavelets, of course, it's this exact uh, threefold configuration which is uh, in, uh, in play here, because most of the thing originated with Morley from a physical problem, like uh, vibroseismic for exploration. We have had, uh, we have seen a lot of development in math, and also, as was told by uh, Martin and other people, everything works well because you have algorithms, and you have things which are made possible in terms of, uh, of computation. And so it's very parallel, so it's, it's a generalization to what we already observed in Fourier and what made the success of Fourier, which was not only that it started from a physical problem and can be applied to many physical problems, not only that it's the beginning and the starting of nice mathematical work, but also something which can be applicable because of the fast Fourier transform. And conversely, we can see with the same, uh, with, with the same uh, perspective we can see with the same perspective other developments more or less at the same time which have not had the same success. And for instance, if, this, if you think of all the thing about time frequency analysis which have been developed in the 80s in parallel at the same time as wavelets, uh, you started also from problem in physics with a problem in quantum mechanics, semi-classical approximation, and so on. You have nice mathematical properties, and I think uh, Thierry would agree. But at the same time, from the engineering point of view, it's nice, but you have no 
fast algorithm, no compression possibilities, and you have something which is not efficient in, the ter in terms of uh, real uh, processing. And more recently, other methods have been developed. For instance, I refer to what is called empirical mode decomposition, which um, conversely is very nice from a physical point of view because it's a data-driven method, which a little bit like learning method discussed by Stefan starts really from the data. It's something which is very efficient to be computed with nice algorithm, which can even be optimized, but it, it really lacks from a strong uh, mathematical foundation. And so, just to say that we really need the, the three uh, different feet, in some sense, to, to work uh, properly. So, what's next? Now, if you look globally and you just ask the database uh, globally what happens about a reasonably filtered uh, wavelet this, uh, as a keyword, what you see is that you have some form of explosion in the number of uh, published papers until 2005 or 6 or something like this, and then you get some stagnation or maybe some decrease. And even if you renormalize this, so this is a black curve, and if, and if you renormalize this by the total number of papers which have, which have been published, which is also an increasing number, you still observe the, the same phenomenon. So you can ask what happens. Is it the end of, the, of this wavelet uh, story? Is it some kind of bubble? So uh, one remark that can be done, and maybe I share this with you, I don't know if you agree, is that in some sense, uh, it might, the fact that there is less papers published referencing to wave wavelets can be seen as a success of wavelets. Because in some sense, for instance, if you write a paper doing spectral analysis, it's unlikely that you will put Fourier as a keyword in your paper. So in the same sense, if you are using wavelets now, you do not have explicitly to re-explain what are wavelets and what they are useful for. It might be the fact that wavelets had be accepted in, in the community. Another thing is that you have a, some form of renewal of activity, even maybe with same actors. And for instance, we all know that uh, in, in the recent past, you have, there has been a lot of works related to sparsity. And if you ask the database the same way, what about compressed sensing, compressive sensing, compressive sampling, this keyword them, then what you see is an increase which is more or less compensating the default of the increase in pure wavelet terms. So you see some kind of compensation where we know that part of the actors just move to, to another direction. And the third element we can say is that we, we are drawing a new landscape. And uh, okay, do not trust too much this figure because it has been done very recently and maybe it's not exactly the, uh, the final one. But anyway, what we observed in this, in this figure is that we have still this kind of strong core, which is a new paradigm around wavelet, but also we have some way of having wavelets w which are now much more in different applications. And for that, for instance, uh, astronomy and astrophysics, thanks to Jean-Luc, who is a connecting guy to a bunch of many, many other people, then you have big, uh, big uh, sets of papers which are more application-oriented rather than related to the core of the, of the domain. So, uh, to conclude, uh, did we learn something about that? So I would like first to say again that this is, these are just first steps that I presented here. I thought it was maybe a good occasion, even if nothing is uh, in the final state. So first remark, as Mai said, that's only maps. And only maps is uh, both something interesting because with the eye we can gain a lot of insight. This can be misleading, but at the same time this can be more informative than just looking at tables in the web of science. Okay, so this is some form of qualitative big picture. But this, of course, can be refined because here everything has been put in the same basket in some sense, so we can be more specific. We can also think about, this is currently done, but uh, what is called bibliographic coupling, so co-references only, so to see what happens w and to, to have uh, a closer look at who are really the communities we are interested in. Beyond the qualitative, you can also measure quantitati quantitatively, because I talk about this idea, for instance, of uh, modularity, which is one index which can be computed measuring the way really we have strong cores which are disconnected in between themselves. You can measure the degrees, the betweenness, also the, if there are some papers, author of references which 
have a, a strong weight when you look at the shortest path from one, from one, fit, from one uh, member of the base to the other one. We can also dream of other things because recently there are people who developed some uh, techniques of wavelets on graph for analyzing graphs precisely. So we, can, we could imagine to, to estimate these communities of uh, the wavelet people by using wavelets. Why not? But this also uh, poses some form of new question because the first one is uh, what is the situation of, of this analysis in terms of a priori information? Is it, of course, this is not a blind analysis because we know something about the field and we ask questions which are related to what we know and we want to know. And, okay, we can have many different perspectives, but also the experts are playing some role, which can be a good role because they help for the priors. They can give some feedback, but they can also bias the analysis, maybe. So this is uh, the third po point, which is here, wavelets are a case study, which has this advantage, I see, I think, of being a field which started not that far ago, okay, which is reasonably well established now with most actors still here, most of them in, in the room, and for which we can have some perspective which can validate or invalidate the kind of tools we are with using in this case study, and then think about extrapolating, extrapolating that to other data sets for which maybe we don't have this, uh, this expertise. And of course, you have all this uh, forever question of how to use and misuse this kind of bibliometric data. And the, this has to be, we have to be very cautious about interpretation and so on. But if I come back to this point, experts and priors and feedback, I think m most of them and many of them are in this room. So thanks if you have any uh, suggestion or specific questions on how to improve this kind of analysis and where to go. Thank you.